Now let's talk about our second rule for probability, which is the multiplication rule. The multiplication rule is the rule that we use when we have two consecutive events happening. We want to find the probability of those both of those events happening. We write the probability of event A and then event B happening, or P of A intersect B, as this. The probability that event A occurred in a first trial and then B occurred in the second trial. So for example, let's suppose that we flip a coin three times. And let's let A be the event that we get heads on the first flip, and let event B be the event that we get tails on the second flip, and C be the event that we get tails on the third flip. Let's find the probability that we would get this result. Heads, then tails, then tails. So there's a couple different ways to think about this. If we think about this when we did classical probability, we could list out all the possible results that we could get when we flip a coin three times. So we might get a list like this. We might get tails, 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 and tails, tails, then heads, or tails, heads, tails, and so on. And we would find that we have eight total possible ways that we could get results when we could flip a coin three times. And in that list of eight, there's one possibility, there's one event where we have a heads on the first and then a tails and then a tails. So using classical probability, we find the probability of A and B and C happening is one out of eight total or 0 0.125. But we're gonna use a shortcut in this section. We're gonna use the multiplication rule. Notice that you can also find the probability of getting a heads and a tails and a tails by multiplying. So if you found the probability of, of flipping heads on a coin, that would be one over two. And if you multiplied that in the second event by getting tails on the second flip, that would be one over two. And again, multiply that by the event of getting tails on the third flip, we get another one over two. So one over two times one over two times one over two is again, one over eight, 0 0.125. So this multiplication rule is a different way of calculating probability with instead of the classical method. There are some exceptions to the multiplication rule, some things we're gonna to have to take into consideration. So let's look at this example. Let's suppose that we place two apples and three oranges into a box. And let's let A be the event that we pull an apple out first and B be the event that we pull out an orange. Find the probability that we pull out an apple and we pull out an orange next. So if we're using the previous example, one half times one half times one half, let's see if the probability of apple and an orange is P of A times P of B. We have a problem here. The probability of pulling out an apple is two out of five, because we've got five total pieces of fruit in our box. And the probability of pulling out an orange is three out of five, because we have three total, we have three oranges in the box and five total pieces of fruit. So two out of five times three out of five gives us 0 0.24. This isn't correct though, because this doesn't take into consideration the fact that we pulled out a piece of fruit. When we pulled out the apple and we had a probability of picking out an apple is two out of five, now when we pull the orange out next, we only have four pieces of fruit in, in our box. So the probability of event A and event B happening are the probability of pulling out an apple, which would be two chances in five total, times the probability of pulling out an orange would be three oranges now out of four pieces of fruit left in the box. So we have two out of five times three out of four. The actual probability of this happening is six over 20, which is 0 0.3. Here's what's going on. This is something called conditional probability. And we write it like this. It looks like P of B with a line and then A. And what we read is the probability of event B happening 
given that A already happened. <clears throat> the probability of event B occurring after we know that A has already occurred. So let's do in another example. Let's let A be an event that you win the Mega Millions jackpot and B be the event that your friend wins. Now, when you're competing in the Mega Millions jackpot, you're just picking numbers and your friend could pick the same numbers that you do. So when you pick certain numbers to play the lottery, your friend can pick the same things. It's independent of what you've picked. So the probability that your friend wins, that event B happens, given that you have already won, is just the probability that your friend wins. Your friend's event and your event are independent of each other. So here are the two versions of the multiplication rule. If events A and B are dependent on one another, selecting apples and oranges out of a bag of fruit, then we have the probability of A, event A happening and then event B happening is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given that A already happened. But if events A and B are independent of each other, you and your friend, friend both picking the same numbers and winning the lottery, then we have the probability of event A and event B happening is simply the, multi the product, the multiplication of the probability of event A times the probability of event B. Again, like flipping the coins. So going back to the box example, that's why we have the probability of event A and B happening is the probability of event A, two-fifths. That's the probability that we will pull an orange out of the box times the probability that event B happened given that A already happened. Okay, so the probability that event A happened and B happened, the probability of event A multiplied by the probability of event B given that A already occurred. So let's suppose that we flip a coin two times. Let A be the event that we flip a head and B be the event that we flip a tail. So the probability of event A is one half. And the probability that we flip a tail, given that we already had a heads, is still one half. Those two events are independent of each other. So the probability that you flip a heads and then a tails would still be one over two times one over two. In the ball example, when we pull out an orange circle, or a red circle and we don't put them back in the bag, then we have to use the probability that event A occurred, two apples out of five total pieces of fruit, probability of event B occurring, three apples out of five pieces of fruit, but the probability of event A and then event B happening is two over five times three over five, nope, because we didn't put the orange, the apple back, sorry. So it's three over four. There are only four pieces of fruit left in the box. Now let's say in the bald example or the fruit example that A is the event that we pull out an orange circle and B is the event that we pull out a red circle, but we do put the fruit back or the circles back in the box then we have two out of five probability for event A, three out of five probability for event, event B, but the fruit or the circles have been replaced. So the probability of pulling out uh, an orange and the probability of pulling out then a red, if we put the circles back in, is simply two out of five times three out of five. Okay, let's do another example. What is the probability that we roll a dice three times and each roll is a one? Well, the probability, let's see, that let A be the event that the first roll is a one, and the second B be the event that the second roll is a one, and C be the event that the third roll is a one. 
the probability of rolling a one on a regular dice with six sides is one out of six each time. So P of A is one over six, the probability of event B is one over six, and the probability of event C is one over six. Every time you roll a dice, those, t those results aren't dependent on the previous times. So the probability of all three events happening, rolling a one each time, is probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C. One over six times one over six times one over six, or one over 216. Okay, if you have eight children, what is the probability that every child is a girl? All eight are girls. Well, again, if you have two girls, you still have a one in two chance of having a girl on your next pregnancy. So your probabilities of having eight, of eight girls out of eight children would be one over two times one over two times one over two eight times, or one over two to the eighth power, which is about 0 0.0039, pretty small. If you have five children, what's the probability that you have a boy and then a girl and then a girl and then a boy and then a girl? Well, again, all of these probabilities, all of these events, I'm sorry, are unrelated to the previous ones. So every time that you have another child, the, the chance of having a boy or a girl is one in two. <clears throat> so we, the probability of having a boy is one over two. A girl is one over two, another girl is one over two, a boy is one over two, and then a girl for the fifth child is one over two, we get one over two to the fifth power. Okay, last one. If you roll a die four times, what is the probability that you roll a three, and then a five, and then a six, and then a two? Well, each one of those has the same probability, which is one chance in six. There's six sides on your die. So if you're rolling it four times, this probability is one-sixth multiplied by itself four times, one-sixth to the fourth, or 0 .0008, a very small probability. Let's say, let's go back to the box example. Let's say that this time we put 600 red circles in the box and 400 orange circles. Let A be the event that we pull out an orange ball and B be the event that we pull out a red ball. Find the probability that we pull out an orange and then we pull out a red. So the probability of event A happening, the probability that we pull out an orange is 400 oranges over 1,000 total, 600 plus 400 or 0.4. The probability of event B happening is 600 over 1,000, which is 0 0.6. The probability, th though, of pulling out a red ball, given that we already pulled out an orange ball, so the probability of B given that A happened, would be 600 red balls over 999 total balls left in the box. So the probability of event A and event B happening in this case would be probability of event A, 0.4, times the probability of event B, given that A already happened, which is 0 0.6006006000, for a grand total probability of 0 Now let's say that you asked the, that we had to find the probability of the two events occurring with replacements, where we put the ball back in. That would be the probability of uh, pulling out an orange ball, 400 over 1,000, or 0.4, times the probability of pulling out a red ball, uh, 600 over 1,000, because we put the ball back in, 0.6, so 0.4 times 0.6. So the probability with replacement would be 0.24.